So we'll just give another two minutes. We've got about 100 participants already signed in. Okay. And um, I think this is, what do you think about the format? I know that you tweeted earlier today uh, that this allows you to connect with a lot more people than, uh, you know, than you would have been able to offline. Yeah, I, I, I would say that uh, I've not experimented with, uh, I've experimented with webinar quite a lot in HCL. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've not tried to experiment with webinar with an audience which I'm not normally related with because normally I like to see people in their eyes and, you know, uh, emote uh, and respond to how they are responding and take the conversation in the direction in which they wish to take. So uh, I guess this is interesting. All of us are learning new ways of doing it. This is definitely the way I used to use to do employee communication. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. That, that's the reason I've asked all the people who are participating to give me feedback. Uh, there's always scope for, <laughs> scope, scope, scope for improvement. And, uh, no, and, and I'll, I'll talk about humility as well uh, somewhere down the line, Vineet, because uh, traditionally somebody of your experience or your seniority level asking for feedback from the general population is, I would say, pretty rare. Yeah, I don't, you know, this word general population is the wrong word. <laughs> you know, you know, this is the problem with our country and this is the problem with our leadership. We believe me versus the general population. No, Absolutely. that's not true. That's not true. You can learn from anybody. And there is always so much to learn. If you don't have a learning attitude, then you're dead. Well said, Vinny. Uh, so, Vineet, with your permission, I'd like to get started. Okay. I don't, I don't think we need to make a formal introduction, but and there are very few people here that have probably not heard of you or probably not interacted with you on a personal basis. But for those who signed up out of curiosity, um, you're currently the founder and chairman of Sampark Foundation, which I believe is your brainchild and something that you're passionately pursuing. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, you uh, joined HCL, I believe, straight out of graduate school in 1985 and then went on to found Comnet in 1993. And then you continued in HCL and you were CEO of HCL from 2007 till about 2013, if I'm right. Um, your, uh, I think your highly acclaimed book, Employees First, Customers Second, uh, really shook up a lot of people in the Indian corporate houses and uh, <laughs> in the top tier in the C-suite and so on. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, you were chosen as Fortune Magazine as one of the world's top 50 business thinkers. So congratulations on that. Uh, and if all of that is not enough, you're also a senior advisor to the McKenzie Leadership Institute as well as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So uh, right off the bat, Avinit, I just wanted to get started by asking you, how do you find time for all of this? What is <laughs> what, what, what does a typical day in the, in the life of Avinit look like? Under lockdown and without lockdown? Yeah, no, I, I think the life in the day continues to be a, uh, of a person who is in pursuit of new ideas, new inspiration, uh, disruptive mm -hmm. thoughts, uh, looking for people who can inspire me uh, by what they are doing, what they are saying, uh, looking at inspiring others by by doing stuff and leading by example, uh, by being very centered uh, in here and now, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on this moment, focusing on this day, focusing on this hour, uh, not, not focusing on wannabe, what's gonna happen tomorrow, not focusing on what has been. So although you have made a very long introduction, uh, to me, it doesn't really matter uh, what I did in the past, uh, what matters is what I'm doing right now, what I'm doing today. And therefore, uh, a day in my life is a day in pursuit uh, of the unknown. Okay. Uh, and uh, when, I, when I sleep, if there has been an idea which has been big enough, I feel happy. Uh, if there has not been an idea which has been big enough, then I feel I wasted a day. Has, has this always been uh, the mindset that you've had, Vineet, or is that evolved over the years as you've become think, more and more senior? I think uh, when I left college and joined HCL, 
mm-hmm. uh, and saw the bureaucracy and uh, the politics uh, bringing down the performance of an organization, which led to the creation of Comnet, it became quite clear to me that the reason of your existence uh, has to be beyond uh, profits. One of the biggest uh, inspiration in my life is my mother. And very early on in life, she uh, gave me a mantra, which is very interesting, which has stayed with me for the last 25 years now, that at the lowest level, you're looking for financial security that is very critical for you to achieve. And you work very hard to get to that position. But after some time, the financial security turns to greed if you're not very careful. Uh, And therefore, a lot of people are lost in that greed of more and more, more and more, more and more. But you can move on. And then the second layer of satisfaction comes to what we call the need for recognition. Uh, That you are pretty good at what you do. You're the best. Uh, And that also, if you're not very careful, the greed drives you to want more and more, more and more, more and more. And that's the reason you get into social media, newspapers, television. You have a comment on anything and everything which is happening in life. And I think the happiness beyond that is where uh, she advised me, my mother advised me, where the real joy is, which is the joy of inspiring people, the joy of giving, the joy of doing, and joy, joy of existing, not for yourself. I think because of that advice, very early in life, uh, I understood that, that wealth will come and go, recognition will come and go, relationship. Will, will stay here forever. The impact you had on people and the impact people had on you will stay forever. And that's the reason I think starting 1993, I've lived my life uh, with pursuit of friendship, relationship, uh, importance of human beings, and not really too much bothered about recognition and wealth. And that's the reason uh, I have believed in living day, day by day, and not in the past and not in the future. Thank you. And she sounds like an amazing woman, uh, Vineet. I, I wish I could have met her. Um, lots to learn. Obviously, we are living in a time when they say that, uh, you know, the future is actually being created every single day, especially during this entire, uh, you know, pandemic, which we'll come to in a little while. Um, a lot of leaders believe today that you need to, to, to grow, uh, both professionally as well as personally. You need to challenge yourself by moving organizations and by exposing yourself to different cultures. You're somebody that has been with HCL for a very long time that has helped shape uh, the organization as much as it has shaped you. What advice do you have for a lot of young leaders that are out there that think that it's important to get that 30% hike or 40% hike and find a new challenge every couple of years? I think the way way to think about this is that uh, I, I really don't, it doesn't really matter whether you stay in one organization or you stay in 10 organizations. Mm -hmm. But there are uh, a few other questions which are of more importance. Number one is that if you're not part of growth industry, you will not grow. So choose industry. In 1985, I had an option of joining one of the FMCG levers. And I decided to not join that, but join a four or five million dollar tech company, HCL. That was only Mm -hmm. four or five million dollars in size predominantly because it was part of the growth industry. So decision number one is you have to be part of the growth industry. Uh, Decision number two is you have to be part of a company which wants to do something, right? Which is not satisfied with where it is. So if you join join a company which is saying you should be very proud, I mean, let me tell you a story. A plumber walked into a rich man's house and the rich man spent a lot of time telling the plumber of how blessed that plumber is to be in his August company because A, he's very rich. Number two, the house is very old. It's thousand year old. And he kept on telling here is where Nelson Mandela sat and here is where Michelangelo sat and painted and here is where Gandhi came. And after one hour of monologue of telling the plumber how proud he should be uh, to be in that house, he looked at John the plumber and said, John, what do you think? And John turned to him and saying, that's very impressive, but where the hell is the leak? (laughs) <laughs> and that's, I think that's a very important uh, 
issue uh, that you should join a company which is in search for leaks. You should join a company which is looking for plumbers. If the company tells you how uh, blessed you are to be in their August company, don't join the company. Uh, if the company says we are broken and we have many, many problems to fix and you can help us solve the problem, yes, join the company, you will see a higher growth. The third issue is within the company, uh, make sure you're part of the highest growth center of the company. So if you are playing, if you are playing soccer or football, don't be the person who brings towels. Uh, don't be the person who cleans up the balls at the end of the tournament. Be the center forward, be a goalkeeper, be, be whoever it is. So therefore, if you are part of a sales company, be in sales. If you're part of consulting company, be in consulting. Uh, so it is very important to be the center forward of your company or be part of that team. Uh, and that is what will drive you, drive growth. And, and the last and the most important thing is believe in yourself. If you are not valued, move on. It is very important that you tell yourself you're the only one of your kind in the world. There is nobody else like you. And therefore, if you are not valued in that company, move on. Somebody will value you. Don't worry about it. Somebody will value you. So as long as you remain centered on those ideas and do not fall uh, to the prey of, you know, buttering your boss or buttering your company and hopefully tomorrow will become better, it doesn't matter whether you are part of one company or 10 companies, you'll grow. I think where the young get it wrong is they don't answer the first three questions. Uh, they, they always ask me the environmental questions. We need my boss is not fair. My company is not fair. How can I grow? No, you have to start with the first question. Are you in the right industry? Are you in the right company? Are you in the right team? And then are, do you have the right environment in that organization? If you get these four right, nothing can prevent you from growing. Obviously, you have to be good. Absolutely. No, no, I think that's, that's a great point that you bring up, Vidi, that a lot of people today struggle despite achieving a lot of success as you have, still struggle with uh, self-identity and self-confidence. Uh, and more often than not, they tend to look for it in external things versus internally. Uh, and I think that you brought this out very well in your book as well, and which has, uh, right from the start, a very controversial title, Employees First, Customer Second. Um, a lot of people say that we are in the business of making money and profit is our primary aim. Um, but a pandemic like this brings everything into focus where purpose is questioned as well as profit. How do you, how was the response, uh, you know, to your book? And do you really think that Indian corporate houses have been able to adopt that philosophy? One thing I would like to say uh, before mm -hmm. we go to this question is that one of the sure. issues which I've adopted in, in some book foundation. Mm -hmm. is that we make it very clear to all the employees who are joining Sampark Foundation, it's about 150 mm -hmm. of us, okay. that I will do everything in my power to find a greater job than Sampark Foundation for you. If you want my reference, take it. I encourage people to leave. Uh, I encourage people to find opportunities outside the organization. Predominantly because I tell them that my business is to find newer opportunities for you, newer growth for you, and I want you to be happy. So every day when you walk into Sampak Foundation, you walk in because you want to walk in. Uh, you walk in because this is the best opportunity for you. You are walking in despite the fact that I'm encouraging you to leave and find newer opportunity. So therefore, when people walk into Sampak Foundation, they feel inspired predominantly because they are here to learn. They are here to grow. And they stay in Sampak Foundation as long as they do that. This whole idea started at HCL. Uh, when I... When, uh, HCL, but ComNet. ComNet is what I formed in 1993. It's a startup organization uh, in the business of remote infrastructure management, which grew to uh, a billion, billion dollar plus. Of course. Uh, one of the things which I learned in a startup is that there are no hierarchies, there are no pyramids, there are no structures, there are no processes. Everybody is aligned to one goal, survive and to grow uh, and to be the, be the best uh, you can be. And we were a very small company. At the same time, our aspirations were so big that we wanted to compete and become bigger than IBM. It sounds ridiculous today, but at that particular time, our biggest wall cry was, we want to be bigger than IBM. Now, so those kind of unreasonable aspirations, uh, those kind of uh, flat structures, those kind of aligned sets of people working together, 
produce magic and that's the reason startups produce magic so when i came to hcl technologies in 2005 and we wanted to transform uh, the organization uh, to a high performance organization uh, what became very clear to me is that you know we were living in our past we were uh, looking at the rear view mirror mm-hmm. and therefore we needed to transform any transformation is transform the world is change the form of something permanently now the way to change the form of something permanently is to come up with an innovative idea which is disruptive now innovative idea can be in what you do product pricing proposition market or actually innovative idea could be how you do it culture so the question we asked is can the cultural transformation of a company uh, transform the company can if you are employee centric can you transfer transform the energy level of the organization can the clock speed of the organization improve so that everybody is more motivated and just by increasing the motivation and alignment of the employees can the results be dramatically different and that's exactly what happened at hcl employee first customer second was an example of inverting the organization pyramid making the management accountable to the employee my appraisal was done by 100000 employees and the results were published for all to see because it was it was centered on a belief that the true value is created by the employees and the management has to be in the business of infusing encouraging enabling those employees to create the true value and once you get that concept right in your head then the company started growing very fast so that was the first part of your question in terms of the need of employee centricity came out of the need to transform it here and also an idea that if you increase the motivation level of an organization the automatic results are different the second question for you for which you are asking is i think more important Uh, in terms of the acceptance of the idea then and the acceptance of the idea today correct i think the the the, the crisis of leadership in our society originates from uh, the fact that we were a very socialist organization for quite some time having very large i'm talking about india especially very large number of public sector undertakings uh, where we used to take care of all our employees uh, and the government used to take care of health government used to take care of education and this was in france this was in many other countries okay. then came globalization and with globalization uh, one set of people started dominating our thinking which is called shareholders and the shareholders brought this concept that the concept of growth is uh, increase in shareholder value and for many years during the industrial age we grew at the cost of employees uh, and because of which the unions came in to try and balance that but they were not able to do it now slowly the customers woke up and customer centricity came in because of laws because of uh, digital uh, media becoming strong so the customers got their say so the shareholders got their say the customers got their say two sets of people who didn't get their say is the employees who were largely used misused abused Uh, and the society in general uh, which we are seeing right across and therefore a lot of leaders struggled in how to convince the leaders of the corporate world across the world that the employees are not a part of a problem but they are actually part of a solution and this did not happen for many many years two things changed number one when digital age came in industrial age got replaced with digital age innovation dominated it's not how much work you do but how much innovation you bring to the organization innovation can only be brought by inspired and motivated employees and that is the first time people started looking at employees with the lens they started looking at employees with uh, a lens of a solution so when you look at all new organizations like facebook twitter linkedin all these guys coming start coming in they start coming in with a completely new set of employee policy Uh, employee centricity but the legacy companies still didn't recognize it and therefore we always have companies which are doing extremely well which have employee centric policies and when i say employee centric policy it is about giving opportunities to employ to run right that's that's the opportunity fast forward to where we are today 
Where we are today is that we, we have a very large problem of unemployment. And the leaders are going to sit on the crossroad and saying, what do they want to do? They have a choice of sacking a very large number of people, which is what most likely they will do. And with an assumption that they are going to solve a problem, or they can take a more difficult choice of cutting costs somewhere else and creating a culture where the employees feel safe with the belief that if you make an employee feel safe, he or she will find a solution to your growth problem. This is exactly what we did in 2008 recession. We announced a policy of no HL like left behind. So I truly believe that intelligent leaders of tomorrow will figure out that this is the right time to invest in a culture where the employees feel safe and secure so that they can invest in you tomorrow. If you hire and fire today, you will win for one quarter, two quarter, one year, two years, but the employees will never forget it. And employees will not walk into those in a motivated fashion, in an inspired fashion, and you will not get the best out of them. So therefore, you have an opportunity of building your future today instead of throwing it out is, is the way, way I think about it. Absolutely, Vinita. And uh, I hate to simplify your philosophy, but essentially happy employees are productive employees, like they say. And like you, like you emphasized as well. And I think the numbers in HCL, while you were in command, speak for themselves. You joined in 2005. Uh, I think revenues were at about 700 million, and you left in 2013. And I think revenues were over four, four and a half billion dollars. Yeah, and, but I, I, I just like to correct you. I, sure. I don't think I'm, I'm into this happy employee, because I don't understand what happiness is. I believe happiness comes from inside. It doesn't come from outside. I believe in an inspired employee. You know, yes. if, you, if you can create inspired employee, if you can create an organization where every single employee wants to climb Mount Everest every day, that is an organization. That is a mark of a leader. What do you do to inspire me to want to get up in the morning and go to office and climb Mount Everest every day? So happiness is, so HR will have these pizza parties and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, beards, you know, that, that's not what employees are looking for. True. Employees are looking for, inspire me to do stuff I never thought I'm capable of doing. That is the leadership which we want. But I, I was going to come to this question a little bit later, but I might as well ask you now. So is, is the organization's responsibility to inspire the employees? Are employees supposed to be coming to the organization inspired themselves? Or is it the, the senior leadership's responsibility? It, I think it's a, it's a great question, and I, mm -hmm. this idea, I call it diverging vectors, converging actions. I truly believe that the responsibility of inspiring yourself is yours. I don't think it is an organization's responsibility to inspire you. But what happens is that when you get into an organization, uh, the organization can result into a higher clock speed by making everybody walk in a certain direction. So all of us have a certain view of life, which is what I call diverging vectors. All of us diverge. All of us, okay. all intelligent people have different points of view. Is Narendra Modi good for India or bad for India? Divergent. Is Trump good or bad? Divergent view. Everybody has divergent views. Views should always be divergent, predominantly because they create an opportunity of a conversation. But actions have to converge. So a leader's leadership is all about taking over divergent views and converging them towards an action so that we make progress. So it is not inspiring an individual person, but it is about inspiring a, inspiring a team to move in a certain direction. And when, once the team starts working in a certain direction and running in a certain direction, and that direction has a purpose. For example, at Sampark Foundation, we want to get to two crore children. So if that direction has a purpose, then the inspiration is a lot higher because your self-esteem and your, your aspiration, your inspiration gets aligned with the team's aspiration. I don't understand what the organization is. I only understand a collective group of people come together and form a team. So as long as you can inspire a team to run in the same direction parallelly rather than pulling each other down, you have done your job as, as a leader. Got it, Puneet. So uh, keeping the same train of thought, 
these are some of the most challenging times that i think a lot of people have seen in their lifetimes uh, both personally and professionally uh, if you had to probably shortlist two or three skills that a future leader or a current leader must have to survive and thrive in these times and to lead a team effectively what would you say they were in your in your opinion i think the first and the foremost and i've said this multiple time is you need to have unreasonable aspirations okay if you have an aspiration of an ant you will be an ant you can be a rich ant a fat ant uh you know a fast ant but an ant is an ant ant is not a butterfly Got so it. you have to have unreasonable aspirations which have nothing to do with reality uh when a child is born in india the amma or the grandmother picks up the child and defines a vision for the child that your fingers are long you'll be an artist your head is wide and you'll be an asa scientist uh that that vision of amma has no no data no logic no reason but everybody believes in it you need to have the same aspiration for yourself it doesn't need to have logic it doesn't need to have a reason so the first aspect of leadership is that you need to have unreasonable aspirations uh which is very very critical number 2 innovation 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 you need to think innovation everybody even a stupid i'm not not stupid even a child can draw a straight line anybody can draw a straight line life is not about straight lines life is about curves curves come from innovation right so anybody can shoot a straight bullet but the issue is how to give a bullet an angle so the second aspect you need to develop is how to think of an idea outside the box how to okay. think of something which nobody else has thought about that's the second aspect of it and third is the attitude that you can never ever do it alone you can never ever do it without people around you and people will be around you only if you inspire them if you don't inspire them if you are not genuine in your feelings if you are not genuine about their development they will not work with you so be unreasonable in your aspiration be disruptive in an in your innovation and your attitude should be about inspiring your team otherwise you will not succeed i think this, these are these are great points vinith um speaking of innovation speaking of outside the box with this current pandemic and i and i have to bring it up and i want to bring it up because i'm sure you kept your finger on the pulse of the indian corporate scenario and the government agencies as well how well do you think the organizations are doing firstly in handling this pandemic and what they what could they be doing better so uh i would say there are three aspects uh mm -hmm. first is in my mind if you are a leader and listening to this this is the greatest opportunity you would ever ever have in your life uh a diamond cutter gets excited with rough diamond a potter gets excited with rough clay a good leader gets excited with a challenge and this is mother of all challenge and a mother of challenge inspires a great leader so if this challenge was not there you don't have a job so this is an opportunity for you to demonstrate that you're different you can be a team leader you can be a a small team leader you could be a regional leader you could be a national leader but this is an opportunity for you to demonstrate that you're different so first get it clear in your head that this pandemic is the greatest opportunity you will ever have to demonstrate that you're different to the rest point if one. you want to shine the time is now that the time is now everybody can run a 100 meter race when you know you are running on a treadmill but now the treadmill is running against you so very few people can run a 100 meter race when the treadmill is running in the reverse direction so once you have understood that then the question is what what is the reality the reality is the week will fail the markets will consolidate and therefore the market share of the strong will increase so therefore once you understand it it is an opportunity so if it is an opportunity go for it right now how do you go for it three things first is get your team in place and inspire them tell them you with them 
tell them if you die you will die together if you live you will live together not only communicate be genuine right what does the father of a family which is running out of money says to the family we will look together and if there is one chapati we will share it we are in tough time so yes we are in tough time we will do it together so the world is together because you can never survive and the employees will never forget these words because these words at this time are genuine if you get your communication person to write a draft for you and you give all kinds of english words everybody everybody understand your intention people are very smart uh, about it so first is put your team care number 2 find ideas focus on few ideas cut out 90% of your ideas focus on three or four ideas and put all your money behind those ideas believe in something you cannot this is the time to take a few bets you cannot say i do, i will do 100 things no this is not a probability game focus on three or four things and get them right and the last point if you are a leader shop on your saw what worked yesterday will not work tomorrow everything has changed the way people work the way people buy the way people relate with each other the way the the, the way people measure performance all has changed reboot yourself refocus yourself recenter yourself and you will win well said vrit and i think it's it's a great point that you bring up that out of chaos either leaders are born or leaders fade away and i think it's a great opportunity for everyone even if they are not in a leadership position to be able to prove themselves yeah that's um, true vrit i hope you're comfortable because i don't think any of my participants are going to let you go anywhere for a while our questions are are really piling up so make sure that you're well hydrated you've got lots of water because yeah, i uh, have <laughs> okay good good um talking about inspirations very you had mentioned your mother in addition to her who were the other inspiring figures in your life um as you you know you <clears throat> you you've grown and you've traveled and you've read who else has inspired you or what else has inspired you i think that's a great question and many people ask me mm-hmm. and i would believe that uh none i am inspired by people's action people's idea and not by people so how mahatma gandhi converted non violence from a strategic disadvantage to a strategic advantage how martin luther king's cry of freedom inspired a completely new generation how nelson mandela's patience and tiring out the apartheid inspired a whole generation and inspired a country to get independence how this you know there is a store near my house uh, how that man is you go there he comes out he gives you this sanitizer he asks you about your family you know so there are many shops which are selling groceries but everybody is buying from this guy because he has something nice to say so i am inspired by him i am inspired by his action i am inspired by you know so so therefore it is not personalities their brands but their ideas uh and i get i am a, i'm a sponge i'm a sucker for ideas i'm a, i'm constantly looking for uh people their actions and their ideas which can inspire me so other than from a personality point of view other than my mother uh for example shiv nader is hugely inspiration but not as a person but for his actions his bold prem ji is hugely inspiration fc kohli is hugely uh, inspirational so each one of them i i am inspired by some actions they took uh, which i say wow man you know fantastic uh, but bill gates you know some actions steve jobs but i i would not say i get inspired by the entire cohort of of, of steve jobs no some actions he took uh, yeah. which are part taking so i would advise to all of you don't get attracted to personalities uh train your mind to sharply focus on one thing they did or one thing they said which hits you right in the heart stay with that let the personality go because people are complex people are very very complex so stay with the idea not the person other I than think, your I parents <laughs> <laughs> no no i think that's a great perspective we need that uh, you don't have to learn everything from just one person and yeah. you're so quick to find flaws in people even if we do agree with some part of their philosophy 
So I think it's a great perspective that you can learn from pretty much everybody that you meet, either what to do or what not to do, like they say. Yeah. Um, so we need moving on to, uh, we've, we've talked about skills, we've talked about the pandemic. I'd love to talk to you about your current passion, which is the Sampark Foundation. Uh, where, where, where did the inspiration come from? What is it that you're trying to do, reaching out to two crore uh, kids? So I think this journey started with uh, a story. Uh, mm -hmm. I was traveling to New York, and as you read, as you said in the in the beginning, that Fortune magazine had come up with this article, creating a dream team where I don't know how my name appeared next to Steve Jobs uh, of a, a group of uh, six uh, people who could run any organization. So and New York Times also did a article. So I was on my Correct what I call a uh, heady high, my, my head was about 20 times bigger than what you're seeing right now. <laughs> and uh, when your head is 20 times bigger, the mistake you can make is walk up to your mother and say, mother, aren't you proud of your child? So my mother is a teacher. Uh, okay. And uh, she took out a, a, a note, uh, an English copy, tore, tore a page in half. She believes in uh, saving paper, wrote something, sealed it in an envelope, gave it to me and saying, next time you travel abroad, uh, see what is written there. And obviously I was very sure that she would have said, uh, what a great son I have. I'm so proud of you. Uh, I'm glad you were born in my house and not somebody else's house. So I was traveling to New York. I had this single malt uh, next to me and I opened that envelope and there was only one word written on that piece of paper. It said enough. And uh, I didn't understand it. I landed in New York, called her and said, what does this mean? And she says, if you didn't understand, you will understand it on your way back. And uh, on my way back, I understood it, that there comes a time in life, as I explained to you, the three months in life, uh, where you have to say enough. You have to say that there is enough. I happened to, after that, travel into Punjab, and I saw schools where not only people have not had any food before the midday meal, but the education standards were very, very poor. Uh, 70, 80 percent children in grade five cannot count beyond 99 or construct simple sentences in their local language. Uh, and me and my wife and my mother formed Sampak Foundation to try and see if we can uh, bring in design thinking, bring in disruptive innovation to try and solve the problem. So although the Sampak Foundation is a philanthropic initiative, but that's not the way we think about it. It is our money, but that's not the way we think about it. We think ourselves as a design house. We think ourselves as a disruptive innovation house. And we ask ourselves the same question in terms of how can we solve the learning outcome problem, which nobody else has solved for the last 60 years. Uh, we said by focusing, uh, by having an aspiration which is unreasonable, by having an innovation which is disruptive, uh, and by focusing on ideas which nobody else has attempted before. So we focused on the classroom transaction, the classroom transaction between the child and the teacher. We got inspired by Bollywood and saying, how come all the people without power, electricity, food, illness, watch a Bollywood movie and feel inspired about it? Uh, so we brought a Vidya Bal an equivalent voice, uh, an audio device into the classroom and started teaching maths and English using songs and dances. Uh, we got inspired by Mary Poppins and Vidya Balan and brought a Sampar Didi uh, character to teach children. And then we started training teachers. We trained two lakh teachers every year. We reached 90,000 uh, schools. We have about 70 lakh children in our program. And the learning outcomes are significantly improved. Remember I told you 72% of the children cannot count beyond the 99. Uh, in our last uh, learning outcome uh, survey, about 86% of children can do division and multiplication in grade two. Uh, so that's the, that's the kind of change which has happened. As I speak, we are launching, and this is somewhere I'm going to ask all the listeners for some help. Uh, remember next week, I'm going to reach out and ask for some help from you. We are launching the biggest platform and the biggest thing I have done in my life. Uh, I'm, we are trying to launch a digital platform to be able to reach Sampark Didi uh, into the house of one crore children in the next 100 days. The campaign is called Nosegara. 
संपर्क दीदी घर में नौ से ग्यारह मतलब संपर्क दीदी विल बी इन योर हाउस नौ से ग्यारह कीप कीप ट्रैक ऑफ माय डिजिटल अकाउंट्स ऑन लिंक्ड इन एंड फेसबुक आई विल रीच आउट फॉर योर हेल्प नो मनी आई डोंट नीड मनी बट आई नीड योर एक्टिव पार्टिसिपेशन आई आई थिंक वी नीड टू रीच आउट टू दीज वन क्रोड चिल्ड्रन एंड दैट्स वॉट दैट्स वॉट आई एम डूइंग आई एम आई एम ट्राइंग टू सी इफ यू कैन मेक a difference in the life of people who have been left behind uh, because i have been fortunate to be in this country to have been born in this country to be inspired by this country to be given an opportunity in this country to have earned a lot of wealth in this country uh, to have a lot of friends in this country to try and see if in the next 20 30 years whatever number of years i have i can inspire you know two crore children and change their lives that would be a life worth living no absolutely and uh, i wanted to uh, one commend you on the work that you're doing vinit and two is there a website that uh, all the listeners can go to if they want uh, to know more about uh, sampark and the work that you do right so one of the things you all must understand is uh, when i was in hcl i used to travel in private jets and used to have 100 people for every activity uh, now for everything i have your truly i have to look at the mirror and say <laughs> so no i have none Uh, okay. other than the sampark foundation website you can find it we are not very organized uh, but i know for a fact that if i want something we will get it done and if you want to help you will find me so we will find each other uh, not the easy way uh, but the hard way uh, but we will get there the, if the intentions are right correct the right will happen and i believe the intentions are right you and me will connect <laughs> 